All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to talk to you about a company called Voyager Digital. It trades in the U.S. over the counter under stock ticker VYGVF. This is a Canadian company, and they are a cryptocurrency exchange. So this is a small cap, high growth stock. We cover these types of stocks all the time on the channel. Also, this is in the crypto realm, and we talk a lot about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners. So if all that's content that you're interested in, please do us a favor and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Also, please remember to smash the like button. It helps the channel out a lot, and I really appreciate it. Lastly, in our pinned comment, you will see a link to our free Discord, so you're welcome to go over there and join us. So I want to talk about Voyager Digital. Three big things are going on with Voyager Digital over the past several months, and it just seems like it's one thing after another after another. And as a result, their stock has crashed massively. This stock is down, I think, somewhere near 97% off of its highs, so I want to take a look at that. We'll look at the charts later, so so stay tuned for that, and you'll see that in the chapters below. But what, what I really want to talk about is the three major issues that are going on with this stock. They've all happened in the year 2022, and the last two have happened in pretty much rapid succession. Now, I do think that the last two, although they are very big deals, I think they have them under control, and so I want to go through those two first and explain them, and then talk about the third one that I think for the moment everybody's pretty much forgot about, which I think is their bigger risk. Then after we do that, we'll take a look at the chart and see where this stock has gone and, and where it might be going to. So stay tuned, there's a lot going on with Voyager. First, let's take a look at the stock price. This closed at $1.1.97 on Monday. So that's just over a dollar. It did break a dollar for the first time on Friday, and it went down to 93 cents. So that was its 52-week low. As you'll see, it's traded as high as almost $21 in the last 52 weeks. If you go two months back further than that, it was actually trading at $30. So this stock has fallen dramatically. And again, if you watch this channel, time after time after time, we're looking at companies down 90, 95, more than 95%. So the question becomes with these types of companies, are they going out of business or are they staying in business? That's really the risk analysis that you have to do. When a company's down 97%, that's really the only question in my mind that needs to be answered. So again, this is not financial advice. You guys have to do your own due diligence and, and make your own buying decisions. But I'm going to show you why they're under such pressure and what three things happened to put them into such a critical situation with their stock price. The first one has to do with a company called Celsius. What is happening amongst all these cryptocurrency exchanges, they're all suffering big hits because everybody has fear that there's third-party exposure between exchanges. There's a lot of lending that goes on in cryptocurrency, and if you've lent money to one of these exchanges that's become insolvent, you may not get that money back. Celsius is not a small exchange. They have 1.7 million people that use this. So a memo to Celsius community. We are writing with a very important message for our community due to extreme conditions today. We are announcing that Celsius is pausing all withdrawals, swap, and transfers between accounts. For their customers that had money or cryptocurrency held with Celsius, they cannot get it back right now. And, and they're, quite frankly, at this moment, they're not sure if they're ever going to get it back. So the most recent update came today. Crypto lending firm Celsius asks users for more time to fix issues after halting withdrawals. Nobody's gotten any of their money back, and furthermore, they're asking for more time. Initially, this had some spillover into Voyager as people were concerned that there was some risk associated between the two companies. So Voyager put out this message. Okay, on June 14th, so this is after Celsius had put out their note that they are stopping withdrawals, Voyager put out this note. Voyager Digital provides update on asset and risk management. So I won't read this whole thing, although it's, it's worth a look. What I want to go down to is the relevant section here. In the middle of this, they say, although Voyager announced a prior partnership with Celsius in 2019, Due to the company's ongoing due diligence and risk management process, Voyager currently has no customer assets at Celsius. So they reacted quickly, but their stock was taking a hit. They put this out right away to let everybody know they are not involved with Celsius right now. This distanced themselves from that problem. So, so that was one giant issue that came up that gave the stock a pretty hard hit, but they quickly responded to this. Okay, in the middle, another thing has occurred. So we've got an article here said that, that says another big 
big crypto player just blew up. On Tuesday, the CEO of one of the big crypto investment funds, Three Arrow Capital, made a gnomic remark himself about the state of his fund. We are in the process of communicating with relevant parties and fully committed to working this out. So they go on to say, now with much of the crypto market down 90% or more from its all-time highs, Three Arrows Capital until recent days was one of the most prominent and highly regarded players in the space. They're saying it is either dead or on life support. With an interview with Wall Street Journal, Suzu and 3AC's co-founder Kyle Davies confirmed that the fund is looking for a larger fund to bail it out. So this is a private fund. This is not an exchange. However, there is reason to believe that Voyager does have exposure here. There's the potential for third-party risk, and I'm going to go to their financial statements and just show you why. And, and just so you know, this is not something I dug in and found. This is going around. Everybody is very worried about this. Their stock has taken a hit on this. So here's why. Okay, so on their balance sheet, they have $2 billion that they have lent out. In the next section, they break down those counterparties by geographical location. So if you see counterparty B is in Singapore, and that is 16%. So there is high speculation, although I don't know that anybody's confirmed this for a fact, but this is basically what's giving the stock a giant hit to the downside. Three Arrow is based out of Singapore. So people are assuming that this counterparty B is Three Arrow and that there's potentially $326 million of counterparty risk exposure with Three Arrow. I do not believe that has been confirmed or denied by Voyager, but the fact that it is so heavily impacting their stock and they have not yet responded, as we saw, they immediately responded to the Celsius situation and let everybody know we do not have any dealings with them right now. So they have not done the same thing so far with Three Arrow. However, they did just do something big that I do think mitigates this risk to the extent where I think it should take a lot of the selling pressure off of Voyager stock. Okay, Voyager Digital signs term sheet for $200 million and 15,000 Bitcoin revolving line of credit with Alameda Research. So Alameda Research is one of their large investors. So if we read in here, the proceeds of the credit facility are intended to be used to safeguard customer assets in light of current market volatility and only if such use is needed. So you've got $200 million in a line of credit plus 15,000 Bitcoin, which, you know, this is somewhere in the neighborhood of $450 million. And what all of this is about is to avoid essentially what is the equivalent of a run on the bank. These crypto exchanges have the same type of exposure as banks to where if everybody were to all come and get their money all at once, they wouldn't be able to fulfill those obligations immediately. And they could run into some illiquidity and they could go under as a result. So this as a backstop, I think is a pretty major step in the right direction. So this was announced on June 17th at 5.53 p.m. So the markets had already closed. The U.S. markets are not open today. However, this also trades on the Canadian exchange. So I just want to take a brief look and see how the market is reacting to this news because today is the first trading day since they announced this. So if we take a look, we're in the middle of the trading day today. Voyager Digital is up about 2%. So there's not a massive reaction to this. At least it's not continuing to cascade downward. It's trading at $1.37 in Canadian dollars and it was as high as $1.53 today. So this seems to be adding some amount of stability, but too soon to tell how much that's actually helping. Okay, the third problem, on March 30th, they put out this news release, and they literally just called it Voyager News Release, March 30th. On March 19th, Voyager Digital and Voyager Digital Limited received the following order in respect of the Voyager customer accounts that permit customers to earn rewards on their crypto balances. Voyager is aware of or has received cease and desist orders from the State Securities Division of Indiana, Kentucky, New Jersey, and Oklahoma. These are cease and desist orders, and it all focuses around their rewards program around their token. So this situation is far from resolved. And, and I have a feeling all of this will end up getting tied into the crypto regulations that are pending in the United States. So Voyager also has a token and customers are rewarded relating to that process. So this is one of the things the SEC is scrutinizing and that, that lawmakers are taking a look at that concerns them. So these exchanges that are, you know, that are involved in so many different things in an unregulated way right now is an area of concern. And we have seen with Celsius that it can lead to disastrous situations. This was the initial reason that the stock really started to nosedive, and this problem has not yet been solved. However, they did put out this press release on June 9th. Voyager State Orders Update Voyager continues to operate the Voyager Earn program in all states except Kentucky. So they go on to say, it is encouraging that all states other than Kentucky have allowed Voyager to continue to operate the Voyager Earn program. So with all of those three things going,
going on together. Let's let's just take a look at what has happened to Voyager stock. So back in April of 2021, if we measure from there, Voyager is down almost 97% in just over a year. So even if I just go all the way fast forward to November of 2021, which was about seven months ago, so Voyager had pulled back considerably to around $20 at that point, but they're still down almost 95% from there. So Voyager on March 28th was trading at around $7. Now remember on March 30th, they announced this issue with the cease and desist orders. So since that date through to today, they are down 85%, almost 86%. Now, a lot of their peers are down in similar amounts and a lot of these small cap high growth stocks, again, if you watch almost any other video on my channel, you'll see that so many companies are in a very similar situation. But Voyager has three very specific things that are causing it. One of which they have dismissed totally, which is the Celsius situation. Another of which is the three arrow situation, which it looks like they have mitigated with some financing or a backstop, if you will. The third one is this cease and desist order that remains open. So, so far, only the state of Kentucky has forbid them from, from using their rewards program. So we don't know where that's going to end, but it is some uncertainty that still weighs over them. So this one, I do not currently hold Voyager. It's been on my watch list for so long. I don't know where the bottom of this is. I already am heavily invested in the crypto universe in general. So for me, that's the main reason I'm not involved in this stock. And again, this is not financial advice. You guys have to do your own due diligence. This stock's down 97%. So the question is, if they can recover from these issues, there's an awful lot of potential upside, but we don't know what that is. And we do know the potential downside, and this is happening to some of their peers, is zero. So I'm not predicting that they will fail. In fact, it looks like they're taking a lot of progressive action to, to mitigate all of their issues and to come out of the other side of this. But we don't know. It is a big risk. So I'm just going to give one very small price target, and you're going to see how much potential upside there is. And again, the risk for this is clearly that you will lose all your money. So there's a risk reward analysis to be done. But if all they did was get back to their March 28th highs, which was right before they announced that there's a cease and desist order on their rewards program, that would be a 575% increase in the price of their stock. So there is astronomical upside to this, but there is no telling when or if they will ever get back to that price. So again, please be careful, invest wisely, do your due diligence. That's all I got for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, please remember to subscribe and smash the like button and we will see you in the next video.